Today we're gonna to do 10 innovative products I saw at the 2017 Summer NAM. In no particular order, I'm gonna start with Temple pedal boards. These guys come up with an interesting new pedal board system. What it does is it has plates that stick to the bottom of your pedals and then using a locking system to attach them in a modular way. So you can move your pedals around and you don't have to worry about using Velcro. Now what's exciting about that is they also developed a new pedal board system that really does a good job at hiding your cables. The perfect product for somebody with OCD that doesn't want to look at a mess. But more importantly, an interesting way to make all your components interchangeable very quickly. The other exciting part was the pedal boards are not much more or if not the same price as other pedal boards. So you don't have to break the bank to get involved with this product. The next product is by Phil Jones Bass Amps, which I've been using for years. They're small and they make a huge sound for such a small footprint. But unfortunately, they're very low to the ground. So he's come up with a product called the Earbox, a self-monitor that goes on any mic stand and can you put it up right next to your ear. It puts all the highs and the clarity back in your sound, but more importantly, just a few inches away in either direction, it's almost impossible to hear, so it won't bother your bandmates. This product gives you the ultimate in clarity and sound, but with almost no footprint on the stage, and also relies on the amplifier to power it. That's right, there's no portable battery system or external power source that you have to plug into it. Just run a cable to your amplifier and the amplifier will power it. The next product isn't new to the show, it was new to me, which is the GraphTech variable tuning gear system. So what happens is each tuning key has a different gear ratio to help you really finely tune each, each string and make it sound perfect and set that intonation exactly right. But more importantly, they came up with a new system that allows a plate to come underneath it. So you requires no drilling or modification to any type of guitar. So not only do you not have to pay a technician, you can save your vintage guitars by not damaging them with extra holes or modifications. Or if you want to put them on a guitar that you're not sure about and, if, and decide later to get rid of that guitar, you can keep these tuning keys and put them on your next instrument. Now this next one isn't necessarily something innovative or new, but it's exciting nonetheless. PV has released the HP2s, basically the Wolfgangs again, but with some serious changes that I thought were exciting. First, they're back in the USA. So they're making them in the USA again, which is great to see PV jumping back not only into the guitar market, but into the US guitar market as well. It's something I've been waiting for, and I think a lot of us gear aficionados have been waiting for, is to see PV go back to that carbon Kiesel attitude of, hey, what can we do to keep products in the US and price friendly? And these guitars are just that. At $1,500, they are a far cry from their competitor market. And more importantly, the innovative idea is they're using all the old parts they had laying around. So they're using a little bit of a recycling idea. You know, hey, we have this stuff. Why not use it and make these guitars? Next up is a big favorite of mine. It's the Morley pedals. And the Morley wah pedals are not only good, but they are big. So they've decided to make a mini version. Now, I know what you're thinking. Some other wah company has already done that. So what's innovative about making a mini wah? But what's exciting about them is they're adding a glow in the dark aspect. They know it's a small black pedal on a black pedal board on a black stage and it's gonna get hard to see. So they've added a new glow in the dark feature to help us find and see that wah pedal. Now this product is one of those aha moment products. It's the Pure Tone Jack. It's an input jack. Now, I've been repairing guitars for decades, so if you've been repairing guitars, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Input jacks are something that break very often, and they are very, very important to, obviously, your stage performance and playing your guitar. They cause crackling issues, or they cut out entirely. So how do they fix this issue? Well, instead of one arm pushing against the cable, they came at it from two arms, one on each side, but then put two smaller arms on the ground side. You have 360 degrees of pressure pushing on the cable to keep it in place. Not only does it give you a firm connection, but it more importantly will stop your, your input jack from bending, breaking, or damaging, causing all kinds of issues. And they're relatively inexpensive, almost the same price as a normal input jack. I really see this being the future of input jacks, and I don't see why we'll see any of the old ones anymore in just a few years. Now here's a product I continue to see manufacturers say they have, but then you find out they don't. It's a noiseless single coil pickup. A small company called Music Engineering Services, ran by its lead engineer, Russ, makes a single coil Telecaster pickup and P90 pickup that is truly a single coil, but noiseless. It doesn't use a dummy coil or it's not a stacked humbucker. So you get that true clarity of those single coils, but absolutely no 60 cycle hum. So it's a really interesting idea, but more importantly, priced extremely aggressive, lower than any competitor's product out there. 
The next innovative thing I saw was from T-Rex pedals. T-Rex has come out with a new tape delay, but what I thought was really interesting was two things. One, they're using a removable analog tape cartridge. This idea is a really cool idea because once your tape is kind of worn down, you can then remove it and go ahead and put in a new cartridge. But most exciting about it is its new price point at $599, which puts it at a far cry below the lowest competitor at $1,000. This puts a real tape delay pedal in the hands of a lot of musicians. Even though $600 is not inexpensive, it is definitely price point friendly for this type of product. Now lastly, I'm a little biased. This product was the most exciting product for me, which was vintage guitars. Now the reason it was exciting was Trev Wilkinson of Wilkinson Bridges, Italia Guitars, uh, Fret King, you name it. And what happens is they have made a new affordable line of guitars with an interesting twist. So let me explain what it is. So not only are they affordable guitars in the four to $500 range, but more excitingly, they've done some innovative processes to something that looks very basic. The first is the basic tremolo system. So the Wilkinson Strat tremolo system has some changes. And I want to explain it to you the way Trev explained it to me because it was very interesting. So when Fender started making their tremolo, they had four wound strings and two plain strings. But later, guitar players started using a banjo string for the G string and changing it to a plain wire string for bending. Now, when they did that, that caused a problem because the bridge wasn't designed to have three wound and three, three plain strings. So even though you can adjust the saddle back and forth, it still doesn't create, uh, doesn't fix the issue of a thicker cable having a different angle. So if you look at the bottom of the Wilkinson tremolo block, you'll see that they staggered the points where the strings go in to help alleviate this problem, to improve intonation and tuning stability. More importantly, they also went ahead and changed the way the saddles are bent so that they bend them in closely so that the uh, screw has 100% contact with the saddle, transferring more vibration and stopping that rattling issue that we all can't stand. It was really interesting to see so much effort go into an instrument that is designed to be price friendly. Well, there you have it. 10 interesting and innovative products that I saw at the 2017 Summer NAM. Now, if you saw these products and you were at the show and you let me know what you thought. Did you like them? Did you have opposing views of what I thought? Did you see other products there? If you guys have uh, either went to the NAM or seen other videos of other interesting products, put that in the notes too. I'm curious to see what I might've missed. And also, if you'd like me to review any of these products, put that in the notes. I'm curious to see what of the 10 products you all found most interesting. But lastly, I want to take a second to thank everyone who came up to me, shook my hand, and did selfies. It was really overwhelming how many people came up to me at the show. It was really exciting to talk to you all. And lastly, I want to thank everybody on Saturday who came up to me and commented on the shirt in a positive way. Uh, this is my way of uh, basically saying don't take yourself too seriously when another YouTube channel uh, kind of says something about you. Don't worry about it. Just shake it off and just go your own way. Pun intended in that, by the way. And as always, I want to thank you for your time and know your gear.